I'm going to just, just talk. So I gotta, I'm able to project. So can you all hear me? Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So and I see the looks on some of your faces, and you look a little, a little weary. And I, I, I can relate to that. Last night, I was hanging out with my girlfriend, and I just looked at her, and she just kind of looked at me, and I just realized, man, she's been through a lot in the last few years. And I, I, I'm sure she was looking at me and thinking the same thing. He's been through a lot in the last few years. I think all of us have, right? It's been a tough few years, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Very, uh, very scary at times very difficult at times, and uh, wondering, are we going to make it through this pandemic? What's going on with the economy? What are we going to do? Are we going to get sick? This is scary, right? Stressed a lot of us out. Seems like that's the way of the world the last few years. I, and sometimes I just sit home after a long day and I just think to myself, man, I think I got some PTSD or something going on here, a little bit of trauma. Like I need to talk to a counselor or something. It's been tough. It's been tough. And, and it's, I, I think it's powerful to just talk about it and just share what's going on. Because, yeah, that hurt builds up within us and it, it disrupts our ability to function, I think. It's important to talk about it, to pray about it, and to ask God to heal that in us. That's, that's my prayer for you today, is that you'd find some encouragement and healing after all the mental health trauma we've been through over the last few years. And we shouldn't try to brush it aside. It, it was a trauma for really the entire country. We, 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 we all could, you know, it'd be wise to just sit down and talk and just talk about, man, this was really scary. I was worried about my mom. My dad got sick with, with you know, the, the COVID, and I was scared for him. Keep me up at night, and I was worried, am I going to get it? Or am I going to pass it on to someone I love? This is a scary time, wasn't it? It was. So I, I, I hope you could find some encouragement in the Word of God, and I just want to share a message with you. This is a, a scripture that's very encouraging from the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verses 3 and 4. It says this, this is God talking to you and to me and to, to us during this time and, and he says this, You, you, whom I have upheld since your birth, that's who upholds us, that's who, that's who cares for us, and brings us from the womb of God, and have carried you, it says, since you were born. Wow. He says this, Even to your old age and gray hairs, God says, I am he. So like, I am the one, right? I'm the one who's with you. I'm the one who's been with you since the day you were born. He says, I am he who will sustain you. Sustain means to to like hold someone together, like hold someone up. Almost, it pictures almost like carrying someone who has like a broken leg and you, you got your arm around them. And, and, and they're carrying you, right? So you can walk safely. He is our sustainer. He says, I have made you, made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. I like that. Rescue. Ever feel, have, have a day or two where you feel like you need to be rescued? <laughs> Believe me, I've had that. A lot of people live lives of quiet desperation, where we're secretly afraid a lot, right? Trying to force things to quietly go our way. And I used to live that way. And I saw people during the pandemic who do practically live that way. That I have to, all there is is me, and I have to somehow figure out how to make things go right. When you're faced with an invisible enemy, the pandemic, the COVID-19, how do you as a person manipulate events to keep yourself safe? You can't. So I saw people become hysterical with fear because why? 
because they, they were in the role of, I'm, I'm all there is, and no one is going to help me. A lot of people live that way. And even, even some self-professed Christians, followers of a living God, still don't actually live as if there is a God. They still live like, well, it's, there's a God somewhere, but he's not going to help me, so i got to do it myself. And they became hysterical with fear during the COVID-19 outbreak. And why is that? Because guess what? We're not supposed to be in that seat of final authority. That is not our place as humans. We can't control events. We can't control the universe. We can't force things to go right in our lives. We need a creator, a God, to be in that seat in our hearts and in our minds so that instead of looking to ourselves, which I can't even do like algebra very well, much less, you know, force my life to go in the right direction. You can't live that way. This is not doable, you know? So, what you want to do then is unseat yourself from that king role and put God in that role. Say, God, I'm going to let you control the universe and you guide my life. Now, now what's the hard part of that? The hard part of that is I'm no longer in control. And that's scary. Because we like to control things, and I want it to go this way. And with God on the throne, he, he may say to us, well, you may want it to go that way. Here's my plan. It's going to be pretty different. That's the hard part about that, when we put God in the seat of the king, right? As Lord of our lives. We don't know what he's going to do with our lives. <laughs> he, may, he, he may send us somewhere and have us do something that we maybe don't want to do. But he'll say, this is my will for you. And that's kind of scary, isn't it? And I will tell you from firsthand experience. I used to be an alcoholic, <clears throat> drug addict. I have two DUIs, um, disorderly conducts, back in my home state of Wisconsin. And um, at, at one point, I realized that I needed a, a God to run my life, that I needed Jesus Christ to run my life, because I'd made a mess of it. And thankfully, when I called out to that name of Jesus Christ, there was someone on the other end of the line that answered, you know? But that's what I noticed about other religions in the world. I, I tried some of those things, and, and it was always a, a, a dial tone at the other end. But when I cried out to that name of Jesus Christ, I was shocked to find there's a real God behind that, behind that phone. And I'm like, whoa. You mean there's someone really there? There's actually a, a real God that's there? And I was surprised. So I, I was raised up in, the, in, our, in our modern times where we think, oh, science and technology have removed the need for those backwards traditions of God and the Bible. Oh, that's just the backwards fairy tales. And, you know, uh, and I thought that. That's what I thought. I thought, this is just a fairy tale. Uh, I, I was raised Catholic. I was like, this is just silly. This is a fairy tale. We, we've moved on from that. We've got technology. We've got science. We've got industry. And I thought, it's not real. And little, <laughs> you know how surprised I was to find that there really is a Jesus Christ who is alive and, and a savior for humans and that we all need. That was so surprising to me. I, I kid you not, I was surprised. I was shocked. I was like, Wait, you're saying God's really real? Like, really real? Like, actually here in, in this room with us? Like, real? Really sustains the universe? Whoa. That's. Wow, that's something. But I, you know, you're taught to think a certain way, right? Naturalism, science, you know, technology. Uh, humanity is the only end. We're, we're progressing and we're all going to, you know, deify ourselves. And it's just a bunch of garbage <laughs> that I found. So how does it work then? When I realize, okay, God's really real. How does that work? What's, how, how does this all work? What, is, what am I supposed to do? And how do I respond? And what does God need to do in me? And how does it all work? Okay? So he, here's the, the crux of the problem, is that humanity has rebelled against God. That's why we see the world so messed up. That's why there's all this bad stuff, poverty and death and, and crime and, and just terrible things, human trafficking and stuff. It, because humanity has rebelled against God. 
We've gone off in pursuit of something called sin and evil. And we choose to do bad things, selfishness. We, we serve ourselves first. And, and, and that is what has caused a separation between us and God. And so, so we need a Savior, which I learned to, to, to be under the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to be our Savior and to wash away our past sins and give us a clean slate. That's apparently how that works. I don't get it fully entirely, but that is what God laid it out for me, though. We need a Savior to wash away our sins. Okay? So, what do we need to do then? What do we need to do? You're here today. Maybe you're already a Christian. Maybe you're, you're already a follower of Jesus. Maybe you're not. I, I, I got a good deal for you. I got a really good deal for you. Because if you put your faith in Jesus Christ right now and ask him to forgive your sins, guess what? Even though you lived your whole life not being a Christian, not following God, it doesn't matter what you did. E even at the age you're at right now, you can give your life to Jesus Christ, and when you die, you will go to heaven. That's kind of scandalous, isn't it? Like, you know, any age, it doesn't matter. It could be like 10 seconds before you pass away. If you give your life to Jesus in that moment, you will live forever in paradise. Okay? And that's pretty like, whoa, you know? But that's how God set it up. Like, the, the offer is open as well as long as you're breathing. Now, when you stop breathing, honestly, the offer is no longer open at that point. Just be aware of that. That we have until our last breath to receive Jesus as our Savior. That's how that works. So we're, we need to turn to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and, and, and guess what? He is present here with us right now. Isn't that something? He's here right now. And he's available for you to put your faith in right now, if you want to. It's a choice. You can choose to believe in him and receive him as your Savior right now. So do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus Christ has saved you? I believe that. I believe that. So, you can receive Jesus right now if you want. Are you interested? You want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior right now? All you have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry for the sins that I've committed. I reject those sins. I repent of them. I'm not going to live that way anymore. Please, Lord Jesus Christ, be my Savior. Lord Jesus, be my Savior right now. If you just say that in your heart to him right now, he, he will become your Savior. You can say, yes, Lord. I say yes to you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. That you bled and died for my sins. You have to be willing to admit you need a Savior. You know? You have to be willing to admit, like, hey, I'm in, I'm in need of that. I need someone to be my Savior. I need my sins washed away by the blood of Jesus. And it's open for you, for you, and for you, and for you, and for you. All of you. Open for you. See, here's what Jesus did for us. Jesus' death on the cross, he, he said, I'm going to go to the cross and be slaughtered on the cross as a, to pay off my sin debt. So it's as if my sins, the things I did, nasty things I did, I mean drinking, drugs, bad stuff, smoking cigarettes, bad stuff. And Jesus says, you, you put that on me on the cross and I'll pay the price for it. That is scandalous, isn't it? Jesus became sin for me. He says, I'll pay off your... It's like, it's like I was in a courtroom, and, and the judge is reading off my sin. It's a long list for me. And it's like Jesus Christ came into that courtroom and said, well, hold on a minute, judge. I'll take the punishment for those sins on myself. I will take your sin off of you onto him. And then you get his righteousness as a result. Where you're, where, where you're now ready for paradise. That's scandalous. The Son of God, that's Jesus Christ is God in human form. We need to understand it. Jesus Christ, like God, come to earth on a rescue mission to save us. He says, I'll take your sin on myself. Whoa. That's why the that's why the psalmist, the songwriter says Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. If you if you if you're aware of Amazing Grace, the song. 
So the author of the song was a captain of a slave ship who would ferry slaves from, from South Africa to the New World, to uh, North America, to be sold. And this guy saw the depth of his sin of what he was doing. And he asked Jesus for forgiveness. Now, I, I'm sure most of you were not slave ship captains uh, in your previous life, but we all have sins that we've committed against our family members, brothers and sisters, parents, husbands, wives, even against ourselves, you know? Getting drunk and using drugs, you could say, was a sin against myself, and I was hurting myself. But I was also hurting my mom, who worried about me every day, my dad, who felt like he had lost his son, who, my sister, who thought, I don't even have a brother anymore. In Matthew 11.25, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For Jesus says, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's what I found in Jesus was rest. Rest from my weary toiling, from trying to force life to go my own way. Finally, I could rest in Jesus Christ and say, I, I don't have to fight anymore. My, my, my bill is paid in full. I felt the weight of my sins on my own back. The weight of the, the, the things I'd done. And Jesus just pulled it right off. Because I'm, I paid that for you, it's gone now. And I just left for joy. I was like, wow, I'm free. I'm free. All of it, gone. Everything I did, gone. Jesus took it all. Do you want that too? That, that freedom is so, it just lifts the burden off you. I see some of you looked burdened. You look burdened. You look burdened. Some of you do. Let Jesus take that burden from you. You don't have to carry that anymore. You do not have to carry that. Give it to him. You don't have to wear that on your shoulders anymore. I see the heaviness. Give it to him. And Jesus says, I, that's what I did. That's what he wants for you. He says, I will take that for you if you'll give it to me. Our part is to give it to him. Jesus, I give it to you. Give it to me. It was so heavy, you guys, what I'd done. And I was guilty. You get that? Like, I mistreated women. I used drugs. I got drunk. I got in car accidents. I put people's lives in danger. I was guilty. Guilty. If, 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 if I had died and gone to hell, I would have said amen. Because I deserved it. I was a bad person. That's why it's for anyone. Jesus says, even if your sins are that long, as long as this guy, he says, I'll take that too. That is, that's the heart of God, is this radical forgiveness where he takes it all. Wow. Wow. So let me tell you the gospel one more time. I want you to listen very carefully so that you understand it in your heart as well as in your mind, okay? This is the offer before you. This is the offer before every human. On the planet, Jesus Christ, that's the, that's the name. You ever, you ever get scared and I speak the name of Jesus? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. This guy, Jesus Christ, a man, yet also claiming to be the Son of God, to be one with God, walked the earth just over uh, 2,000 years ago. God became a man, and the Bible calls him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Your God, the God who made you and the human race, came to live within the flesh of a human body. He lived a life of perfection. Jesus never sinned. No other human can say that. He healed those with injuries. He spoke truth without fear. He really upset the, the religious types. He really upset the Pharisees. He really upset the, the Romans during this time in history. He shared love and cared for the, the poor and, and, and children. He never sinned. He came for the stated purpose of being offered up as a sacrifice for you and me. Wow. And no one forced Jesus to do that. He said, I'm going to do that willingly. He was slaughtered on the cross to return us to communion with God. If only we would believe in him and follow him. Because it's true. 
Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago, and he was resurrected bodily by the power of God and seen to be alive by many witnesses. And the, the, after Jesus was crucified, the, the, the disciples were terrified. They thought it was all for nothing. Jesus wasn't really anyone. And then pretty soon, Jesus is alive again. And he's appearing to them and saying, hey, I'm alive. I, I'm real. I'm the living God. I've resurrected for you to give you eternal life. Every one of us needs a Savior to take our place and to give us new life. Are you born again? You can get born again right now. I kid you not. Right now. You can say, when you get to heaven, you can say, I got born again at Oliver Woods. When that weird pastor in the weird outfit came... I don't know what he was talking about, but something sounded right there, so I believed in Jesus then. You can say that to heaven. All right? So, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word, so I'm trying to speak to you is his word, and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Say, if you believe this, this, this is true. And you say, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins, and I believe in you. I turn away from those sins, too. I just, I'm not going to live that way anymore. I believe in you, Jesus. Today, you'll be born again. Does that mean you're, you're going to have to climb back, back into your mother's womb and be born a second time? No. You'll be born of the Holy Spirit. But people will be able to tell something's different about you. I remember I was in a rehab, a CBRF, when I'd been declared in 2011 a danger to myself and society, I was locked in a mental hospital for about three months. And um, they, the, the staff there saw me, and they were so discouraged. But a few months later, after that, I got saved by Jesus. And I, I started coming to that facility to, to go to AA meetings there, and I was staying sober early on, trying to get up recovery over drugs and alcohol in my new Christian life. And, and one day... One, one of the people who, who worked the CBRF, one of the intake workers, saw me. He's like, Justin, you look like a new person. What happened? <laughs> He's just shocked. I look totally different, you know. I was a mess. And I'm like, I found Jesus. I, I got Jesus. Uh, I got a Savior. And he was shocked. He was shocked, you know, well, that whole town was shocked. I mean, like 40,000 people were like, what just happened? Because they saw this guy wandering the streets as vagabond, just so, you know, miserable and lost. So I was a witness to that whole city, like, yeah, Jesus is really real. Jesus is really real. Wow. Because that kid was the lowest of the low. <laughs> I mean, bad. I wish y'all could have known me back then. You'd be like, I mean, if I could stand the guy I used to be right here... You'd be like, you'd all stand up and say, Jesus is real. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> That's, <true. laughs> That's crazy, you guys. I just can't. I don't know. God will often take, like, the worst bum and turn him into a, uh, you know, a living example of that he's real, right? He, he, he does that, you know? Like the guy who wrote Amazing Grace. You know, you take a slave ship captain and turn him into a, a songwriter for the body of Christ as a Christian, like, whoa, wow. So, in any case, I'd like to invite you to join me in a prayer. The prayer of salvation is a big deal. So only join me if you really want to have your sins forgiven by Jesus and to give your life to him. But I invite you to, if you want to, join me right now. Maybe you've never done this before. Maybe you're like, I don't, you know, I don't fully, I've never done this. Well, let's do it right now. Why not? Why not go to paradise? You, you, you might be there sooner than later, right? Good thing to do. Make sure you're ready for judgment. When you stand before God on judgment day, then, which won't be too far off, necessarily, you'll be able to go before God and, and say, and, and God will say, like, okay, do I need to judge you based on your sins, on what you did during your life, good and bad? Or can I judge you based on the fact that Jesus Christ has paid off your debt? And you'll be able to say, oh, I, I have Jesus. 
God said, like, all right, you're good to go then. Come on in. Your, your, your bad sins are washed away. You're, you're good. You're on your way to eternal life. Well, let's pray. Would you pray with me? Let's pray together. <coughs> Loving Heavenly Father, God of the universe, we cast ourselves before you humbly. We stretch out in belief. We stretch out and cry out to the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Save us. We give ourselves to you right now, Lord Jesus Christ. We turn away from our past sins. But we lay those sins before you, God. We think of all the, all the ways that we've sinned, God. We've lied, we've stolen, we've cheated, we've drank, misused people, God. Please forgive us, Jesus, of those sins. Please, Jesus, forgive us for those sins. Jesus, you have paid off our debt with your own blood. Forgive our sins. We repent of those old sins, Jesus. We reject that old way, Lord. We believe, Jesus, that you lived a real life and that you died on the cross as a sacrifice for the atonement of our sins, to wash our sins away. We now receive the gift of eternal life. We receive the Holy Spirit within us to guide us right now. We are born again of the Holy Spirit by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We leave behind our old ways. We are now yours, God. Help us to pursue the new life before us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.